What's going on everyone? Sly here and thanks for checking out another Mass Effect video. So, I was talking with some friends a while ago and while we were talking about Mass Effect, I was surprised by how many of them out there knew very little about the Nexus. Now, while we don't know a lot about Mass Effect Andromeda, you know, in general, there are a few things I wanted to point out about the Nexus as well as bring its story to those who don't know much about it. So, before we get into some juicy speculation on my part, I want to briefly talk about the purpose of the Nexus and what kind of role it plays in Mass Effect Andromeda. Again, this is speaking from what we know about the game so far. Now, in the original trilogy, the Citadel was one of those, you know, awe-inspiring places. It made your imagination run wild. Every time you look out the window, overlooking one of the arms, you see little blips of light and ant-sized skyscrapers that poked out of the top like you were in an airplane looking down. Each arm of the Citadel is just that, a mega city, broken down into wards and millions of people living on each arm. Now just thinking about that makes other things come into perspective, you know, like the amount of keepers it takes to keep that place running, the sheer size of its policing force, CSEC, and how many ships must come and go to not only keep that place stocked and running, but to do trade as well. All of this stuff is never really covered in the game, but the world art and world design does such a good job that your imagination kicks in and part of that story gets told to you by indirect means. Now the Citadel is such a great space in the game guys, I mean it can do things that other planets simply can't offer. Every world won't have a huge mix of aliens in close proximity. Every world doesn't have a seat of galactic power, doesn't have multicultural markets for shopping, I mean, places where laws are written for the galaxy to rule by, I mean, the list goes on and on. And the Nexus is just that, another place of power for the next part of Mass Effect Andromeda. Now, I'll have a link in the description box below where you can watch a small tour about the Nexus and everything that it entails. But the Nexus is basically a scaled down version of a mobile citadel. It has two smaller elongated oval arms, similar to the citadels, that connect at the middle by a big tower. That's encompassed by a large ring joining the arms together. When not in travel mode, the space station spins, creating gravity, just like the Citadel. Now, from what we know, the Nexus is a kind of forward command outpost in a way. It's sent ahead of the Arcs and arrives first to start planning operations. And since it's such a huge structure, construction of the Nexus isn't due to be completed until after it arrives in the Andromeda Galaxy. You can see this by the clip here as it shows only one half of the Nexus actually arriving and then it fills in showing how construction will continue once you actually arrive. Now, I don't know if they mean that they'll work, you know, through part of the journey while the rest are in cryostasis, or perhaps the Nexus leaves way earlier than the other arcs and is meant to be completed by the time the arcs arrive. In any way, it's another way to show just how large an undertaking this is for the species of the Milky Way galaxy and what it would actually take to create something as huge as the Citadel itself. Now, once everyone arrives in Andromeda, the Nexus is now pretty much your mini Citadel. It's basically the hub of this area. The hub of power, also known as Pathfinder HQ. If you're not familiar with Pathfinders yet, they are pretty much the leaders and representative of each species aboard the Ark. Each major species has their own Ark, and the Pathfinder is, you know, sort of the new counselor. Each Ark can dock, allowing the crew to board the Nexus just as other ships would have done in the Citadel. In this picture right here, you can see just how massive the Nexus actually is. The human arc, known as Hyperion, is a ship that would dwarf the largest dreadnought in the Alliance fleet. Now here you can see arcs docked to the Nexus. It's a massive station, guys. Each arc can handle over 20,000 bodies. And that's the scale the arcs are built on. Now compare that size to the Nexus. It's simply staggering how large this station really is, and how much we get to explore of it still remains to be seen. So once all the species arrive in Andromeda, everyone docks to the Nexus and are assigned a temporary room until Pathfinder operations are complete and new planets are found that are suitable for each species to inhabit. The goal here is to spread humanity and while operations go on, this is where everyone will stay. Scout ships launch from here and humanity scout ship known as the Tempest, which is basically the new Normandy, is not a long-term space vessel like the Normandy was, so it's meant to conduct operations and then return back to base. However, it does have beds and a galley, but it's definitely smaller than what we're used to. Really, little is known of the Tempest, but from a recent article, they talk about how everything can be reached without loading screens, and that there are also a few levels to this ship. 
As you can see from this image of the Tempest, there's a circular bump in the back area, and this is supposed to be an atrium. In the middle of the ship, it can give you a view from everything inside. From the top deck, you can look down towards ship operations, the galley, and all the way down is the garage, where apparently the Nomad sits in wait. Also assuming the very top will be for the captain's quarters, although that's not confirmed yet. So along with Pathfinder HQ inside the Nexus, there will be other areas you can visit. Any Mass Effect game wouldn't be complete without some sort of nightclub, and as you can see in this clip, it's also meant to welcome new sapient species. There's a separate area that houses the Cultural Center, where new life forms can come aboard the ship and learn about all the species of the Milky Way galaxy and their progress through history. I'd also expect to see hospitals, shops, parks, and the usual things you would see on the Citadel, along with some kind of, you know, reminder of home. There will be science labs, security stations, and everything else to help this new society run like normal. Also, I couldn't forget to add everyone's favorite virtual intelligence, Avina. She makes another appearance in this video as well the next game. She is now more clothed, less electronic, but she's still the same old self. And it's actually a nice slice of the old game that can easily be fitted within Andromeda. So basically, guys, that's what the Nexus is. It's a smaller version of the Citadel where business between species can be conducted. Trade, negotiations, war, planning, and whatever else may pop up. From what it sounds like, the Nexus will be our main start to this story, where we keep coming back and forth for missions, intel, and the likes. But I caught a few things I wanted to mention in my last video, but ended up cutting because of how long it actually became. So another thing the video mentions are department heads for each area on the Nexus. It doesn't list every single one, of course, but it does show the Director of Colonial Affairs. Her name's Foster Addison the Nexus Superintendent, and surprisingly, a female Krogan, Knockmore Kesh, and then the Nexus Security is led by a lady named Sloane Kelly. And as you can see by her picture right here, she looks pretty familiar, right? Well, that's because she's the same person who appears in the gameplay trailer right here. But in this shot, she isn't on the Nexus, and you're going to see her under guard. So that means she's no longer friendly and assumingly went rogue at some point. Also, being security chief, she had the best advantage of staging a coup, so that's my guess. So if you put all of that along with this, which is an article showing the recent set of novels that are due to release as part of this new Mass Effect story, then it all starts to make sense. One of the upcoming novels is titled Nexus Uprising. So something happens on the Nexus that causes things to fall apart. Now, I don't know how things ultimately end up, but from the gameplay, the security lady ends up in charge of this outpost, which seems rather big. So for that, we'll just have to wait and see. So moving on, it also looks like the new ship computer or AI crew member, kind of like Edie, has finally been confirmed. In the gameplay debuted on the Game Awards, you hear the main character talk to someone named Sam. Apparently, Sam is just that person. Sam's everywhere, in your suit, the Tempest, the Nexus, the Nomad. It kind of controls everything, or so the article seems to point out. You end up having a strong emotional connection to Sam in terms of dialogue. I'm pretty sure Sam's going to be a major part of the story. Few other details were given, but it was confirmed that Sam is indeed an AI. Or I guess I should say Sam is AI-like. A computer aid, something like ED, designed to help humanity interface with technology and help them along their journey. They said there's a big story behind that, so let's just wait for that to come out. But that's about it, guys. I just wanted to briefly show off what we know about the Nexus so far and what I think will happen in the game. Now, whether it's a coup or a grave mistake that gets Sloane kicked off the Nexus, we'll have to wait and see. But if the Nexus does get sent ahead of the arcs, time and space kind of get weird at these huge distances. Being that far away and traveling at faster than light speeds, it could be like 50 years of waiting on the Nexus before the arcs actually arrive. So a lot could happen within a time period like that, and possibly this is actually what the book fills in. Anyways, that's it guys. As always, thank you all so much for watching and for the support of my small channel here. As more Mass Effect news unfolds, I'll try to keep everyone as up to date as possible. Follow me on Twitter at Sly Nation. That's the best way to see all of my new vids as well as any information about Mass Effect. Thanks again and keep an eye out for more Mass Effect videos coming out here soon. But until then, this is your boy Sly. Later guys.